Hello guys, I uh, am um, today at the beach in Goa, attending a friend's son's wedding. So I thought uh, I would just take a walk uh, at the beach and uh, talk about uh, C1-C2 diagrams, which is my favorite topic. Why is that important? You've been, if you are listening to my videos, uh, I've been telling how to represent knowledge using C1-C2 diagrams. I took uh, AWS uh, cloud computing as a subject. I thought uh, I could demonstrate the power of C1-C2 diagram using that. But uh, it doesn't stop uh, just with the AWS. It could be anything. So what I mean uh, is uh, this abstract thinking and representing encoding knowledge of any subject. So it can be applied to grade one to all the way to cloud computing or for that matter anything it could be social sciences history anywhere knowledge is captured it can be represented and explained using c1c2 diagrams so the main concept here is we have neurons 86 billion neurons in our brain And there are connections between these neurons forming trillions of connections encoding all the knowledge that we are acquiring throughout our lifetime. Now, if we can find a data structure in a machine, in a computer, which corresponds to these neural connections, how the brain is storing information, then we can copy from the machine to the brain and from the brain back to the machine. So when I say I'm teaching the machine in my videos, what I mean is, I have certain knowledge in my brain and I'm just drawing these models, arrows, circles, labeling them. And uh, that model, when it is imported into the, into the computer, is forming the basis for that knowledge. So now, when I give you access to that system and then you click and then open these objects, you're touching a neuron, you know, you're touching an object, you know. It's kind of uh, activating a neuron in your brain corresponding to that object that you are clicking. And if you, if you click enough times, that physical activity makes it... Uh, uh, makes it uh, uh, the knowledge to be strengthened in the brain. So by simply activating the neuron again and again, you will encode that knowledge using that vocabulary. And language plays an important role in this whole thing. Why is it important? Because how is knowledge represented? You got to label it. You got to encode it. So every word has a meaning. Words by themselves may not uh, uh, capture the whole essence. A word can have multiple meanings in, in the language. So what you need to put each word in terms of a context. So the context is nothing but C1, C2. The, the, you need two things to define that context. 
C1 represents a lang a, a, an entity and C2 represents another entity and the arrow between C1 and C2 represents that there is a relation between those two entities. So when we say a VPC has subnets, subnet, the word subnet is a concept. And then the word VPC, virtual private cloud, is uh, another concept. So we, we, we can say one VPC can have many subnets. And, and then you launch your instances in those subnets. And each in the subnet represents a range of a range of uh, IP addresses that we can carve out. So that's nothing but your CIDR block. And like that, we can keep on expanding the understanding of subnet, the understanding of VPC by simply attaching additional nodes or objects to that particular to that particular uh, node, whatever we are talking here. So, knowledge is is acquired and then updated continuously as you are getting exposed more and more about that particular thing, whatever you are studying. So, at a very high level, I can just simply say a VPC has many subnets and subnets have a bunch of IP address range and in which we can launch instances and then each instance is associated with the security group. You see how I'm expanding one after the other. But at any given point of time, I'm only talking about two things, VPC to subnet or subnet to IP addresses or instance in a subnet, subnet to instance or instance uh, to security group to control access to the security group. And you can run many applications on an instance, an EC2 instance. And those instances uh, can be controlled who uh, using security groups. So you can run a lot of applications on one instance. One instance can run multiple applications. What is an application? It's a piece of software. Okay. And every application runs, you know, you can make it run on a uh, port. You know, what is a port? It's just uh, when you have to run multiple applications on a single machine obviously it has the same IP address so I need to be able to uniquely identify which application I'm talking so for example if I'm SSHing you know secure shell into an instance I use port number 22 and if I if I run my web application I'm running it on the port 80 or 443 for securely HTTPS default you run on port 443 so again all these are concepts where we are just uh, defining two entities and then encoding a very very minute detail of information and then a collection of these connections as you encode becomes your bigger conceptual knowledge. I guess uh, I gave you some idea today. So I'll pause here and then I'll make another video on something. But uh, I thought uh, I would just take a moment today. A beautiful Goa beach in a beautiful setting. I would uh, talk about uh, my favorite topic 
encoding knowledge and transferring and talking to machines, teaching machines. So thanks for watching my videos. And if you like uh, to be part of this adventure along with me, and if you want to make a, a great living using cloud computing, and uh, if you want to, uh, if you are interested in learning any software technologies, please subscribe to my channel, Sudhakar Mohaparthi, on YouTube. And these are raw videos, in fact. So today, this video is also going to be a raw video. I'm just going to post it. And later, at some point, I'm going to edit these, edit these videos and create sh shorts and uh, more uh, comprehensive uh, videos about EC2 or VPC all tied together. So these my working videos or just randomly whatever topic that day I felt like talking, I'll just talk and then upload. And if you want to practice this kind of things, get in touch with, get in touch with us. We will train you how to draw these diagrams. And then the moment you draw one diagram, you will immediately see and how how your knowledge what that is vaguely described vaguely uh, understood earlier will become crystal clear because there is no ambiguity in representation unambiguous representation is what we are aiming for this can this have implications if you are a software engineer when you have to communicate the requirements to your users or you want to code those requirements into the machine you need an ambiguous way so this will give you the tools and techniques skill bank system can give you that uh, way of representing modeling things so hope uh, you understood something a little bit more enjoy the view All right, see you in my next video. Bye-bye.